now we're driving the Ford Territory Titanium X and of course this isn't our first time to drive the Ford Territory and if you haven't watched our review of the Titanium be sure to check that out first. Not too long ago, we reviewed the Ford Territory Titanium. Now we have something better, the Titanium X. If you haven't watched the previous review, be sure to check it out first. Anyway, this crossover is quite popular and it's not hard to see why. The 2023 Ford Territory Titanium X is priced at 1,599,000 Philippine Pesos. That's 264,000 Pesos more expensive than the Titanium. Is it worth it? I say yes. Looking at its exterior, it's pretty much identical with the Titanium with the same aggressive and very standout front fascia wearing Ford's latest design language. Even the features are the same, like the full LED headlights with a split design and the full LED taillights. Changes on the exterior are the larger 19-inch alloy wheels wrapped in Goodyear efficient grip tires which I definitely prefer and a power tailgate which adds convenience. Obviously, the cargo area is the same size as in the Titanium but we do get the addition of a cargo cover to hide your stuff from dangerous ice. And now we're inside the Ford Territory Titanium X and if you've already seen our review of the Titanium, this should look very familiar to you. But this does have a few differences which are quite noticeable. So anyway, in terms of design, this is of course a huge upgrade compared to the previous generation Territory. We have much better materials, this soft touch plastic on top which feels very solid by the way. And then this leather portion over here and some faux wood trim which just adds a touch of premiumness to this interior. It's also very modern with a dual screen setup, we'll get to that in just a bit. And then the most noticeable difference here compared to the Titanium is the color scheme. So this one gets a dark gray and ivory interior color scheme. The Titanium gets a black and peacock blue interior color. So this one is my personal favorite. Some people will prefer the blue one, but this one for me is what looks better. It just looks more premium as well and then right here we have our leather wrap steering wheel which feels very nice it's very nice and thick the rim itself and then the leather material as well it has perforations and some stitching which look very nice and it feels nice to the touch then our controls over here for our audio and instrument cluster which we'll talk about in a bit and then our ADAS controls on the left so we have our lane keep assist adaptive cruise control both features only available on this variant the titanium only gets regular cruise control and then our horn so it's our typical European car, American car horn. Then the steering wheel is also tilt and telescopic adjustable. So there we go. Better adjustment compared to the previous generation. Then talking about the screens, which I just mentioned earlier, we do have dual 12-inch screens over here. So the instrument cluster is a 12-inch screen, much bigger than the 7-inch that we have in the Titanium. And unfortunately, though, we don't have much customizability here. So you can just scroll through the menus here, such as our TPMS. Ignore the warning, I'm going to fix that in, in a bit. And then our trip computer over there. So that's pretty much everything that we have on this screen. We do have the same graphic as the smaller screen, but again, it's larger. And also you can change how it looks based on your driving mode. So if you put it in sport mode, it will change. And then in the middle, we have the same 12-inch touchscreen infotainment system. So there is also a huge improvement compared to the previous generation territory. But I think it could still be better because it is not the most responsive, unfortunately. It does have a little bit of delay when you do press something. But the touch response itself is actually quite responsive. But again, response could be improved. And everything, it's actually quite easy to use. So everything you want to find, everything you want to do, like the settings, you know that you'll find them easily. There is no difficulty in using this system. And of course, we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless connection for both so we have apple carplay over there it looks very nice to have and also i have to add that the audio system of this car sounds really good you just have to set it properly and it will sound very nice and also found here in the screen are some climate controls so just press the the controls on the lower portion of the screen and they you can adjust everything so not a fan of this as usual but this is actually easier to use than in most other Chinese cars. We also have our seat ventilation control. So ventilated seats are back for the Territory Titanium X and they are very comfortable. And then moving down, we have some more controls over here. I've showed this to you before as well. These are touch sensitive controls for our air conditioning system. So we have the automatic mode over there, our 
fan speed and they're also haptic so they do have some feedback which does make it easier to use despite them not being physical buttons then moving down again you have a wireless phone charger which can double as storage like putting your wallet or some cards and then in the center console we have this piano black material which i'm not a fan of so under the sun you will see that it does get quite scratched up and of course fingerprint magnet and under this cover we have two cup holders so you can actually take out the division to turn it into a storage area but yeah two cup holders over there then here in the middle our rotary gear selector so just turn it around to bait and drive L low mode is in the middle low gear rather and if you want to if you do forget to put it back into park when you turn off the vehicle or open the door it will go back to park on its own then right next to that we have our electronic parking brake with auto hold function we also have here our auto start stop off button so the car does turn off when you stop while driving and then we have our parking assist system so we'll talk about that later and then our parking sensors off button and next to that we have some controls for the infotainment system we have a volume knob in the middle so thank god that we do have a volume knob over here although i do wish it didn't have the icon on top of it just for my ocd but yeah so we have our other buttons here as well our home button back button that's all over here and some more storage over here so this one actually slides and then our storage underneath the center armrest for the seat these are very comfortable seats they're not the most supportive unfortunately they're a bit flat but they are very comfortable because they are quite soft and they're perforated again they're ventilated and they're also wrapped in that ivory and dark gray material which does look really really good also the driver's seat is power adjustable with lumbar support and the passenger seat is manual and before we get to the back another big difference in this variant is the addition of a panoramic sunroof so the titanium no longer comes with the sunroof unlike the previous generation it's only reserved for this titanium x and now we're at the back of the territory titanium x and there really isn't much to differentiate this compared to the titanium except the panoramic sunroof which does make the space here feel a lot bigger compared to how it actually is and it already is actually very spacious so we have loads of space over here loads of leg room loads of knee room loads of foot room which is very much appreciated and also the seats are very comfortable they're very soft they're not the most supportive like in front but they are very very comfortable and of course the color scheme here is the same as in front different from the titanium ivory and dark gray then again there's really no difference in terms of equipment so we have two air vents and a usb port and that's it over here and now we're driving the ford territory titanium x and of course this isn't our first time to drive the ford territory and again if you haven't watched our review of the titanium be sure to check that out first so anyway let's talk about the engine this comes with the same engine as the titanium variant as well so it's the same engine with the previous generation territory so it's a 1.5 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine that produces 160 horsepower and 248 newton meters of torque paired to a seven speed wet dual clutch transmission and obviously this will drive the same way as the titanium there is nothing different when it comes to tuning so like i mentioned before this is much more fun to drive and much better to drive compared to the previous generation the power and torque difference aren't that much but they do show themselves really well especially the transmission so again this comes with a dual clutch transmission the cvt before was a lot more responsive but this one just feels better overall so when it comes to response there is a little bit of delay so there is very slight delay but once you do get moving it will shift really smoothly it will shift really quickly something that some dcts cannot provide us so this one is actually very well tuned power and torque deliver also pretty good so this one of course does better again compared to the previous generation do note though that this isn't sporty to drive it's not exactly sporty to drive it leans towards the comfort side of things and that's something that i personally prefer compared to some vehicles like let's say the geely cooler though that is a segment lower but again this one gives us more of a comfortable drive rather than a sporty one and maybe some people will be thinking like they prefer something that is fun to drive but you'll realize that for daily driving this is actually the better option with its comfortable comfort oriented driving and speaking of comfort that brings us to how the steering feels because Ford is very much known for providing very light steering in its vehicles and this one is no different but it is better again compared to the previous generation it does provide us a bit more feedback not much but it does provide us a bit 
more, which I would take. So despite me preferring something more comfortable to drive, the way that they tuned it is actually a bit on the more balanced side. Also when it comes to handling, so let's say you'll be taking some corners, this one does do pretty well as well. So body roll is minimal, it is there, but it, you won't really be bothered by it. So you can still take corners with confidence in this car. And it does feel quite fun actually, despite it being more comfort oriented, it will become quite the fun car when you do want to push it a bit harder. And while we're in normal mode, let's give it a bit of an acceleration. So put our foot down and there is a slight delay again, but still the power delivery, you can feel all that. It's all pretty good. And then in terms of NVH insulation, that's one place this did improve compared to the previous generation. Right now, we're going on a bit of a rough road. You can hear the road, but once you do get on other pavements, you, it's a very quiet vehicle to be in. And also, wind noise is non-existent despite our large side mirrors. And then refinement is pretty good. Although you probably heard the engine earlier, it doesn't sound the best, but I think it will do. It's actually quite quiet. You can hardly hear it anyway, most of the time. Ride quality is also quite good, so it's smooth for the most part. There are times that it will feel a bit on the firmer side, but overall, it does the, a very good job of absorbing all the road imperfections, everything that will come your way. It does do a pretty good job at that. So overall, in terms of driving, this is actually a very well-rounded vehicle. So it gives you the comfort, it does give you the fun at times, and it does provide us improved fuel economy compared to before so for owners of the previous generation territory you'll know that that one was quite the gas guzzler this one is no longer like that so inside the city i was able to achieve 11 kilometers per liter with a fair amount of heavy traffic so that's actually a huge improvement compared to before and then on the highway we can expect around 16 17 kilometers per liter i do wish it could do better but yeah that's what we were able to achieve and now let's talk about the advanced driver assist systems because the Territory Titanium X has the complete suite. So I mentioned earlier that we do have adaptive cruise control now and it's not the best that I'm, if I may say. So other vehicles will do it better such as the GAC vehicles and then of course our Hondas, our Toyotas, they all do that better. The system of this adaptive cruise control is very similar to what we had in the previous generation. It does have the tendency to, late, to brake a bit late and it does have the tendency to delay its acceleration as well but at least we do have that feature now the lane keep assist system on the other hand is not the type that would steer you into your into the center of your lane doesn't center you in the lane so it just guides you through the lane which i don't really mind but other vehicles will provide you the most advanced systems also i'll add that the emergency braking system of this vehicle is thankfully not too sensitive so it just it doesn't just brake suddenly out of nowhere unlike some vehicles so it will be a bit safer as well the ford territory titanium x may be priced much more than the titanium but again i say that this is very much worth it with value for money the same comfortable and fun driving experience plus class leading features which are all present ford has here again yet another winner